Hello again everyone. Uh, in the last JK BMS video, I used a 3 watt light bulb to simulate the heating pad. Uh, the heating pad is actually uh, two of them for the uh, EcoTrack battery. Uh, 20 watt each, so a total of 40 watt. And because the JK BMS heating pad driver, this port, is only good for 3 amps. So it cannot drive the heating pad directly. And this is the cable for it. And instead of using the cable to drive the BMS, I'm sorry, to drive the heating pad directly, uh, this cable would be used to send as a signal into a solid state switch and using the solid state switch we could drive the uh, heating pad indirectly through the uh, solid state switch and in this video I'd like to talk to you about different kinds of solid state switch uh, that one could use to do this and here I have uh, four of them uh, let me turn on the power first Okay, the power's on, uh, the LEDs are all lit up, and these are connected in series, so that one after another. And let me talk about the different kinds of uh, uh, solid state switch. The first one, uh, because it uses a P-channel uh, MOSFET, so it's known as high side switch and this MOSFET is uh, F9540 and uh, MOSFET has uh, losses in them so the loss is in terms of uh, measure delta V in this uh, configuration because it's high side so the delta V is between the input positive voltage with respect to the output positive voltage because the high side is on the positive and the delta V is uh, 544 millivolt uh, it costs about three dollar with the uh, black heat sink only so you can see the MOSFET is mounted on a black heat sink and I added uh, more aluminum heat sink to it because the MOSFET is getting kind of warm and so I added uh, additional aluminum heat sink to make it uh, to work safely and by doing the calculation the resistivity of the MOSFET between the drain and the source is 148 milliohm and this is kind of high uh, but for this application it's probably uh, sufficient it's okay and the next one this one uh, I actually modify the MOSFET design and use a much lower resistant uh, MOSFET and I use a ring connector as a heat sink actually it doesn't need the heat sink but uh, just for fun or the head of it I uh, added the heat sink and this is also a high side uh, switch it's P channel the MOSFET is uh, IPD042 P03L3G and the delta voltage is only 30 millivolt 30 millivolt compared to an earlier design or the OEM design is 544 millivolt so after I modify the design it's now 30 millivolt uh, the cost is uh, three dollar plus the custom part for maybe a dollar so it's about four dollar but you have to do the modification and the calculated uh, resistivity is 8.2 milliohm. 
so this is the second design the third design uh, without any modification you could buy this for four dollars and this one is for four dollars and it's also a high size switch P channel and the MOSFET is F5305 and the voltage drop is uh, 169.9 millivolt across the uh, the uh, drain and source and the calculated uh, resistivity is 46 milliohm 46 milliohm and the last one uh, the last one is pretty big it's uh, a low size switch because it's a end channel that means uh, the switch has to be installed in the negative uh, uh, return path and the MOSFET is HY5204 and the delta voltage is 14.9 uh, millivolt uh, cost is $8 and the RDS is uh, 4.1 milliohm so this one has the lowest loss and it only costs maybe five dollars more than the first one even though the first one could do the job the third one is actually a, a better one uh, it's four dollar the fourth one it's only eight dollars and uh, as you know the end channel MOSFET typically have a much lower resistance than the P channel MOSFETs and that's why all the BMS's are using end channel and are hooked up to the negative side of the battery to uh, control and uh, switch it on and off so I would like to recommend this uh, uh, solid state switch and this is being used in a lot of uh, 3d printers uh, to drive the heat heat bed and this is good up to 30 30 amp this is good up to 30 amp and in our application if you take a look uh, the heating pad only draw 3.65 amp 3.65 amp and I set the voltage to 14.5 volts to uh, take into account of the voltage loss in all four of these uh, solid state switch so on the heating pad actually it's only 13.6 volt to simulate what is the maximum voltage of the uh, lithium battery and uh, so 13.6 volt in here and the total power is uh, about 50 watt even though it's a uh, 52.95 because a couple of watt were being uh, used up in the cascade of four of these uh, solder states which so the wiring is pretty straightforward and this is the BMS and if you look at the port I blow this up and this is where the uh, this is where the uh, balancing wire uh, go into uh, for balance balancing this is a uh, uh, 2 amp balancing and this is the uh, heat bed driver good for 3 amps but because of our uh, 40 watt requirement it's more than 3 watts I'm sorry more than 3 amps so we need to add uh, a solid state switch and this becomes the signal the negative post becomes a signal and the positive signal coming from the uh, battery positive and the input of power coming from the battery directly positive and the negative come from the negative poles on the battery negative and the output 
would hook up uh, through a 5 amp circuit breaker uh, to just for safety reasons to a uh, 40 watt uh, heat pad and there's also a uh, on off switch that you could plug in to turn this on and off if you uh, prefer not to use the Bluetooth to turn it off and you could use this uh, hardware switch and this is the RS485 and this is the port for the uh, temperature sensor and this is a very high level uh, JK BMS retrofit wiring diagram and it works uh, quite well and I've been uh, testing this for more than a month now and uh, the JK BMS is still uh, the best for the price out there uh, today so thank you for watching have a good day